छोट छोट के लिए स्टोरी टाइम Hustley was a greedy little boy. He always wanted more of his favorite things. Mom, I want some cotton candy. But you've already got some, Hustley. Yes, but I want some more. One day, Choo Choo's mother invited all the children out for ice cream. Kasli, Choo Choo's mother invited you to get ice cream. I hope you will behave yourself and be good. Don't worry, Mom. Children, you can have a scoop of your favorite ice cream. Please choose whichever flavor you like best. All the children were very well behaved. They all selected a scoop of their favorite flavor. I'd like a scoop of chocolate ice cream, please. I'd like a scoop of vanilla. One scoop of strawberry ice cream for me. I'd like a scoop of yummy butterscotch. Choo Choo, Cha Cha, Chica, and Chiku were very well behaved. They all had a scoop of their favorite ice cream. But when it was Cusley's turn, he grew very greedy. I'd like chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, and butterscotch. I want one scoop of each. I want four scoops of ice cream. The man at the ice cream parlor gave Cusley four scoops of ice cream. He put them one on top of each other, and Cusley felt very happy to see that he had four scoops. Chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, and butterscotch. Mmm. Going to eat them all. But just as Cusley was about to lick the ice cream, all four ice cream scoops started to wobble and then fell to the ground. Yikes! No! Cusley was left with an empty ice cream cone. Oh no! My ice cream has fallen on the floor. Cusley, you shouldn't have been so greedy. One scoop of ice cream was enough for you to enjoy. Cusley wished he hadn't been greedy. I've lost all my ice cream. I don't even have a single scoop left on my cone. Choo Choo's mother was very kind. She bought Cusley another ice cream. Cusley, don't worry. We'll get you some more ice cream. I want just one scoop of chocolate ice cream, please. Just one scoop. Since Cusley wasn't greedy this time, he enjoyed every bit of his favorite ice cream. Long ago, there lived a little brother and sister whose names were Hansel and Gretel. They lived with their father and stepmother in a tiny cottage at the edge of a forest. Hansel and Gretel's father was a woodcutter. He used to chop trees in the forest. 
He didn't earn very much money from his work. So the family had very little to eat. Hansel and Gretel's stepmother did not like the children. She thought they ate too much and that caring for them was too much work. One night, she complained to Hansel and Gretel's father. I am fed up with your children. You need to leave them in the woods. I can't do that. They are my children. Of course you can. I'll show you how. Tomorrow at dawn, we'll take them into the forest and leave them there. Hansel was still awake, and he heard everything his stepmother had said. Later that night, Hansel snuck out of the house and picked up some shiny white pebbles that were sparkling in the dark. At dawn the next day, Hansel and Gretel's stepmother called out to them. Your father and I are going to the forest to chop wood. You children are coming with us. Here's a loaf of bread in case you get hungry. As they walked into the forest, Hansel secretly dropped the pebbles he had to mark the path. When they arrived deep in the heart of the forest, the children's father and stepmother split off to chop some wood. We are going to chop wood. You two must wait here until we return. Yes, mother. The kids spent the whole day alone in the forest. As night approached, Hansel and Gretel's father and stepmother had not returned. Hansel, I'm starting to get really scared. When are mother and father going to come back to take us home? I don't think they're coming back, Gretel. But you don't have to worry. I'll get us home. The pebbles Hansel had dropped on the ground were sparkling in the dark, and the kids were able to follow them all the way back to their house. Their father was delighted to see them. Hansel and Gretel, thank goodness you are safe. I am sorry. I'll never leave you alone again. <laughs> A few days later, Hansel and Gretel's father went to the town to repair his axe, and Hansel and Gretel were left alone in the house with their stepmother. Hmm. Now that their father is far away, this is the perfect time for me to get rid of those brats. The evil stepmother ordered the children out of the house. Come on, you. We're going to have a picnic in the forest. A picnic? Now? Hansel didn't trust his stepmother. He secretly snatched a loaf of bread and hid it away. As they walked into the forest, Hansel dropped breadcrumbs on the ground behind him. Once they were deep inside the forest, 
their stepmother looked at them harshly and said, You two wait here. I'll come back in a little while. The children waited, but their stepmother didn't come back. It grew dark, and Gretel again started to feel very afraid. Hansel, let's go home. I'm scared. We need to wait until morning, Gretel. I left a trail of breadcrumbs, but we won't be able to see them until morning when it's brighter. When the sun rose, Hansel and Gretel went looking for the breadcrumbs, but they couldn't find them anywhere. Oh no! The birds and the mice must have eaten the breadcrumbs. Uh, how will we go home now? Hansel and Gretel walked and walked through the forest, hoping to find someone who could help them. After some time, Hansel and Gretel came across a marvelous house. It was made of gingerbread and decorated with chocolates gumdrops, and a bunch of other sweets. Look at that house, Hansel. It's made of our favorite sweets. Mmm, it looks so yummy. The two children were so hungry that they broke off big pieces of the house and started eating them. An old woman came out of the house. She smiled when she saw Hansel and Gretel. You poor children. You must be very hungry. Come in. I'll give you some hot milk to drink. Hansel and Gretel went into the old woman's house, where she fed them very nicely as much as you like, children. Don't be shy. There's plenty. <laughs> when Hansel and Gretel had finished, they told the old woman that they wanted to go home. <clears throat> Thank you for feeding us. Can you tell us how we can go home now? The old woman <laughs> laughed. Home? Never! You two are staying here so that I can eat you up! <laughs> huh? Poor Hansel and Gretel. The old woman had trapped them. By the time the children realized that the old woman was a child-eating witch, who had built a house of sweets to trap them, it was too late. The old witch locked Hansel up in a cage. You stay here, boy, until you are plump enough for me to eat. <laughs> the witch then turned to Gretel. <laughs> you, my dear, work for me now. She made Gretel cook clean and wash and scrub. In the mornings, the old witch would check to see if Hansel was plump enough to eat. 
Show me your finger, Hansel. Let's see how plump you are. Knowing the old witch didn't see well, Hansel would trick her by holding out a chicken bone. Ah, you are still too skinny. One morning, the witch was feeling very hungry. Angrily, she called out to Gretel. Gretel, today I am going to eat Hansel for breakfast. Fill up the big pot with boiling water. I will make a nice Hansel soup. <gasps> Poor Gretel. She didn't know what to do. <laughs> she knew she had to save Hansel and so thought of a plan as she was putting the pot of water to boil. After some time, the old witch came to see if the water in the pot was boiling. Is the water boiling yet? I'm ready to eat. Um, I'm not sure. I can't see inside the pot. It's too high for me. The witch was so eager to eat Hansel that she climbed up on the stove and peeped inside the pot. Clever little Gretel then pushed the old witch into the pot with all her might. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah! The old witch fell into the boiling water and Gretel closed the lid. She then unlocked the cage and let Hansel out. The old witch is gone, Hansel. We can go home now. Hooray! Not only was the witch gone, but Hansel and Gretel found a pot full of gold coins in the witch's house. We'll be able to buy plenty of food with this. After walking for a very long time, Hansel and Gretel finally found their way out of the forest. When they reached home, their father was waiting for them. Children, I'm so happy to see you. Thank goodness you've come back. I've kicked your stepmother out of the house. She will never bother us again. Hansel and Gretel showed their father the gold coins they had found. He was delighted. The three of them were never short of money again, and they all lived happily ever after. was a very spoiled little boy. He would always throw tantrums when he wanted something. And he would pester his mother to buy him a new toy every day. Mom, I want that toy. Please buy it for me. I really want it. I really do. Cusley's mother felt very troubled with the way Cusley behaved. Especially when she took Cusley to a store and he would refuse to move till she bought him something. I want that toy! I won't come home till I get it! Cusley! Please behave yourself. Everyone's watching.
One day, Cusley's mother decided to be very firm with Cusley. I want that toy car. I won't move from here until you buy it. I'm sorry, Cusley. But I'm not buying that toy car for you. You already have dozens of toys that you don't even play with. But this car is a red one. You must buy it for me, Mom. I want that robot, too. I'm sorry, Cusley. But I'm not buying you anything. Cusley's mother took Cusley home and showed him his toy bin. Look at how many toys you have, Cusley. And look at how many of each kind. You hardly play with them. I really don't think you need more toys. You already have more toys than you can play with. They are all being wasted. Cusley's mother then pointed out some of the other children from the neighborhood. Look at these children, Cusley. They hardly have any toys. Why don't you invite them over and give them some of your extra toys? Good idea, Mom. And so... Cusley invited the children over. Friends, please take some of my toys. I have too many of them. I'd like to share some of them with you. All the children were very happy. They took some of the toys and thanked Cusley. Thank you for sharing your toys with us, Cusley. We've never seen so many toys before in our life. You really are generous. Yes, Cusley. Thank you. Why don't you come and play with us? It'll be fun. <laughs> Cusley felt very happy now. He realized that his mother had made him do the right thing. Giving his toys away had made the other children very happy. And the toys he had stopped playing with were being put to good use. Cusley and Cha Cha were playing with their toys in the park. Here comes the little dinosaur. Ooh, here comes a big dinosaur. Suddenly, they spotted an ant. Huh? Be careful, Cusley. There's an ant here. Just then, Choo Choo came into the park with Chica and Chiku. Let's pick it up and throw it away. It's so tiny. It can't do anything to us. You're wrong, Cusley. The ant is small, but it's very strong. Yes, Cusley. If it bites you, you'll be in big trouble. Yes, and you'll wish you had never bothered the ant. Just like the snake who bothered the ants in the garden. The snake and the ants? Huh? Choo Choo, please tell us the story of the snake and the ants. Yes, Choo Choo, please. And so, 
Choo Choo began to tell everyone the story of the snake and the ants. Long, long ago, there was a snake who lived in a garden. His home was in a hole there. The snake would sleep in the hole. And he would slither out whenever he was hungry. I'm hungry. I hope I find something delicious to eat. Many birds lived in the garden. And the snake loved to eat their eggs. Nom, 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 nom. The snake also gobbled up many of the small creatures who lived in the garden. Like lizards, mice, squirrels, and frogs. Nom, nom, nom. Run! It's the snake! Hmm. The snake always eats my eggs. He swallowed my best friend. The snake ate so many of the little creatures that he soon became very fat. Oh no! I can't get in and out of my hole. I must find another home for myself. And so, the snake began looking for another home. Soon, the snake came across an apple tree in the garden. It had a hole in its trunk. Ah, there's a hole in that apple tree. It looks nice and cozy. I can make it my home. Hmm, but that bird mouse, and squirrel who live on the tree, too. They will be very noisy. I must make them all go away. And so, the snake started to threaten everyone. Hehehehehe. <laughs> <laughs> Leave the tree, mouse and squirrel, or I'll gobble you up. Huh? But this tree is our home. We've lived here our whole lives. It will be very hard for us to find a new home. I don't care. I want this tree for myself. And so you all must go away. The bird, the mouse, and the squirrel were very upset. What do we do now? Let's go see the old toad who lives in the garden. She's very wise. She may be able to help us. And so, the bird, the mouse, and the squirrel went to meet the old toad who lived in the garden. is kicking us out of our tree. It's been our home for years. What do we do now? We have nowhere else to go. The snake has been troubling everyone, my dears. It's about time we get him out of our garden. Come closer. Let me tell you what you must do. And so, the wise toad told the bird, the squirrel, 
and the mouse what to do. <laughs> Later that day, the bird, the mouse, and the squirrel went up to the snake. Mr. Snake, we've come to say goodbye. We are leaving the apple tree. You can have it for yourself. Yes, we have found ourselves a nice and cozy new home. It's much better than this tree. Huh? A cozy new home? Where is it? The bird, the mouse, and the squirrel pointed to an anthill. We are moving to the anthill. We'll be a lot more comfortable there than we were on this old apple tree. Is that so? Is the anthill better than this tree? Then I'll make the anthill my home. You can have this tree back. And so, the snake left the apple tree and slithered to the anthill. Once the snake reached the anthill, he hissed very loudly and ordered the ants to come out. Come on out, ants. Leave the anthill. I want to make it my home. An army of big, red, and very angry ants marched out of the anthill. Are you trying to make us leave our home, Mr. Snake? Yes, I am. And you can't stop me. After all, you all are tiny creatures. And I'm a big and mighty snake. Psst, go away now. Or I will sweep you all away with my tail. The snake thought that he was big and strong and that the ants were weak and tiny. So he started to sweep the ants with his tail. But to his great shock, the ants grew furious. The ants quickly climbed all over the snake and they bit him fiercely. Mr. Snake, but you must leave our garden now, and you must never return, for if you do, we'll bite you again. All the little creatures then got together and threw the snake out of the garden. <laughs> and the snake wished he had never troubled anyone. Boo-hoo-hoo! -hoo. If I'd only stayed in my hole and not troubled anyone, I would have never lost my home. The bird, the mouse, and the squirrel felt very relieved. They thanked the toad for her help. Thank you, Miss Toad. Your idea worked. The snake is no longer in our garden. We'll all live happily now. I'm glad to hear that, my dears. I hope the snake has learned a good lesson. When you're mean to others, you always get into trouble. See, Cusley? When you're mean to someone, you always get into trouble just like the snake did. I won't be mean like the snake. I won't trouble the little ant. Sorry, little ant. I'll be kind to you. Uh, and I hope you won't bite me. <laughs> <laughs> and 
So, Choo Choo's story helped Cusley learn how little creatures could be very strong and that it's best to be kind to them and everyone else. Cusley was a careless little boy who always wasted things. Cusley always wasted food and he always wasted water. Splash! Splash! <laughs> Miss Dorothy, Cusley's teacher, had noticed Cusley wasting water many times. She would warn Cusley, Cusley, you are always wasting water. You mustn't do that. Water is very precious. You must conserve or save water. But Cusley never paid attention to Miss Dorothy. One day, Miss Dorothy took Cusley's class to the beach. It was quite hot and sunny there. <laughs> Cusley wanted to have fun. And so, he began squirting water from his water bottle everywhere. After some time, Cusley felt thirsty. But when he opened his bottle to drink some water, he realized that there was no water left. Huh? Oh, my water is gone! And I'm very thirsty! What shall I do now? Cusley looked all over the beach, but he couldn't find any water to drink. Oh, my throat hurts! And my mouth feels so dry! I wish I hadn't wasted the water I had. I wish I had a sip of water to drink. Miss Dorothy noticed Cusley. She gave him some water from her own water bottle. Cusley, this is why I always tell you not to waste water. Water is very important. We need water to drink when we are thirsty. It is also important for growing and cooking our food. Without water, we wouldn't be able to bathe, clean, or survive. That's why it's important for us to conserve water, Cusley. We must save every drop we can. Cusley drank the water and thanked Miss Dorothy. Thank you, Miss Dorothy. I now realize how important water is. I won't waste it from now on. In fact, I promise to save every drop I can. <laughs> Cusley kept his promise. He never wasted water again. And, if he saw anyone wasting water, he sang this song. There's water, water everywhere. But we must use it with care. Water is precious for all of us. Let's conserve it without a fuss. Cusley's birthday was coming. He was inviting his friends to his birthday party. Choo Choo, Cha Cha, please come to my party. Chiku, you must come too. 
Here are your invitations. Thank you, Cusley. Thank you. Chica was walking towards Cusley. He was carrying a huge cake with him. Chica couldn't see where he was going. And he accidentally bumped into Cusley. What you've done, Chica! You got cake all over my party invitations! I'm very angry with you! Now I'm not going to invite you to my birthday party! Huh? But it was an accident, Cusley! I really didn't mean to drop the cake! Hmm. Cusley, I don't think you should say things when you're angry! It can make you lose good friends, you know? Just like the little king did when he got angry because of a broken vase. Huh? The little king? Long, long ago, there lived a little king. He had a grand palace. The king liked to collect vases. He had so many of them, he would show them off to his guests and felt very happy when his guests praised the vases. Look at my vases! Aren't they beautiful? Oh yes! They are very beautiful! They must be very expensive too! All the vases look worthy of a king! Yes! <laughs> The king was very fond of his vases. One day, he asked his butler to take care of them. Butler, you must dust the vases. And you must wash them all. All my vases should be sparkling and clean. Yes, your majesty. The butler took very good care of the vases. He dusted them with a special duster made of silk. The butler also kept a close watch on the vases. And he didn't even let a mouse or a tiny bug go near them. Shoo, shoo! Go away! Those are the king's vases! One day, the butler took the vases for a wash. The soap he was using made his hands very slippery. And one of the vases slipped and fell down. Oops! The butler was very frightened. Oh no! The king will be very angry if he knows I've broken his face. Maybe I should keep quiet and not tell him about it. He has so many vases that he won't even notice one missing. Hmm, but that isn't a kind thing to do. I must tell the king the truth. And so, the butler told the king about the broken vase. I'm sorry, your majesty. I've broken one of your vases. The king grew very angry. You have done something terrible! I will punish you for it! Soldiers! Take the butler away! And keep him locked up in the tower on the hill! Huh? But, Your Majesty, it was an accident! Hmm. The soldiers started to take the butler away. On the way, the butler met one of his friends. Where are the soldiers taking you, my friend? And why are you looking so sad? Oh, the king's sending me to the tower. He's going to keep me locked up there just because I broke one of his vases. That's not fair. The butler 
father's friend decided to save him. He dressed up like a wizard and went to the palace. Welcome to my palace, Mr. Wizard. Come, let me show you my vases. Aren't they beautiful? I can tell that your vases are beautiful, Your Majesty. I know that they make you happy. But if you want to know the truth about your vases, you should dress up like a stranger and meet with the people of your kingdom. They'll tell you the truth. Huh? Dress up like a stranger and ask the people about my vases? Yes, Your Majesty. And so the king dressed up like a stranger. He went around the kingdom asking people about the vases. Hello, can you tell me about the king's vases? I've heard they are very beautiful. The king's vases? I don't like them at all. They are terrible. They bring bad luck. Huh? Bad luck? Yes. Our friend, the king's butler, broke one of the vases. And the king is punishing him for it. Even though it was an accident. Oh. Our poor friend will have to stay all alone in the tower. All because of those faces. Huh? Excuse me. Can you tell me about the king's vases? Oh, those vases. They aren't very nice. They get everyone into trouble. And they've made our king very mean. Huh? Mean? The king's vases will only spread sadness because eventually they will all break and that will make the king angry and he will punish anyone responsible. Huh? Yes, and everybody in the kingdom will stop liking the king and it will be all because of those vases. Huh? The little king was very disappointed. He went back to the palace. I learned what everyone thinks about the vases, Mr. Wizard. Nobody likes them. And nobody likes me because of them. And so, I'm going to break them all. You don't have to break your vases, Your Majesty. You only have to understand that they aren't as important as people are. And you must learn to forgive and be kind to everyone around you. And not get angry about the little things, because they don't really matter. Hmm. The little king understood what the butler's friend was trying to say. And he immediately asked the soldiers to bring the butler back to the palace. I'm sorry, butler. I punished you because I was angry. But I'm not angry anymore. I now understand that you were doing your best and that you were honest too. I don't care about the vases anymore. I care about you. So please stay here in the palace and be my friend. Hooray! <laughs> And that's how the butler's friend stopped the king from making a huge mistake when he was angry. He also helped the king see that people are far more important than things. Cusley, if we all bump into you and drop something on you, will you get angry and ask us all not to come to your party? Huh? If you do that, You'll have no one to sing for you when you cut your birthday cake. Hmm, I'm sorry, Chica. I understand that it was an accident. Please forgive me and come to my party. We'll all have fun together. Of course, Cusley. Hooray! And so, Cusley stopped saying things when he was angry. Chica and all of Cusley's friends went to Cusley's birthday party. And Cusley had the best.
best birthday ever! Hooray! Come on! Let's have a picnic! Wow! Huh? A picnic? Here in our house? Yes! Mommy, Daddy, I want Cha Cha's dinosaur and Choo Choo's teddy bear. I want to take them home. When Choo Choo finished, she was very happy with her painting. My forest looks beautiful. I'm sure the judges give me a prize. Later that day, Cha-Cha surprised Dino. He took him to meet all his friends. Dino, meet my friends. Their names are Chica and Chiku. Hi, hi Dino. Dino. Hi, hi. 